Hey guys, today we're going to be looking a little bit more closely at graphs of exponential functions. We're going to answer the question, what are some key features of graphs of exponential functions? So exponential functions are in the form y equals a times b to the x, where a is the y-intercept or the initial value and b is the growth or decay rate. And then we have a variable, our input for the exponent. If that b value is greater than 1, then the graph will be increasing and will show growth. If b is less than 1, then the graph will be decreasing and it will show decay. Exponential functions have something called an asymptote. An asymptote is an invisible line that the graph is going to approach but never cross. And the asymptote of an exponential function is always horizontal. So the equation of the asymptote will always be written in y equals a number form. You will have other types of asymptotes like vertical and slant asymptotes, but exponential functions that we're going to be dealing with in algebra one are always going to have the horizontal y equals a number asymptote. So since we have this asymptote, the range is going to be affected with an exponential function. Since the asymptote of an exponential function preside, provides a horizontal boundary, it can be used to find help to help find the range. So since the graph never touches or crosses the asymptote, the range will be written with a less than or greater than sign since the asymptote is not included in the function. So we're not going to have the equal sign. It's just going to be less than or greater than since we're approaching that line, but we're never going to touch it. That number's never going to be included. All right, let's look at number one. I want to graph this exponential function right here. So I'm going to put four times two to the x. Okay, and I want to see the table of values. I'm going to make it go from negative three to positive three, and hopefully that'll be enough to help me fit it in. Or maybe I'll go negative four. So negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, looks like I have enough points to plot this now. So I have the point negative four and point 25. And I need to be careful because the y-axis is counting by twos. So it'd be about right here. And then I have negative three, one half, and then negative two, one, negative one, two, zero, four, one, eight, and two, sixteen. Okay, so there is that exponential curve where the growth started out kind of slow and then it obviously picked up. So now let's fill out this information. So the first thing it's asking for is the asymptote. So as you can see, it's going to keep approaching the x-axis. I know it looks like it's touching the x-axis, but it is not. It's just gonna keep getting closer and closer to the x-axis. So let's draw that asymptote. It would be right here, which is y equals zero. That's the line that it is approaching. The domain is gonna be all real numbers because it's going to the left forever and in the right direction forever. All right, let's think about the range. It is approaching zero, but it's never crossing it. So zero's our boundary there. And then it's gonna keep going up forever. So our range is gonna be y is greater than zero like we talked about, because it's approaching zero, just never crossing it. So think about that asymptote with the range. And then the y-intercept is four. And then this was a growth function since it is increasing from left to right. Okay, let's look at our next equation. Y equals three times one half to the X. I'm gonna see if I can just change the numbers in here. So I do not have to remake the table, which it looks like I can. There we go, three times one half to the x. So this time, since the b value is less than one, you can see that the graph is decreasing. And I have the point negative 448, negative 324, which it looks like that point negative 324 will fit on my graph. 
and then 2, 12, negative 2, 12, and then negative 1, 6, 0, 3, 1, 1. 1.5, 2.75 and then the numbers just keep getting smaller there. So there is that exponential curve. So it looks like we have the same asymptote even though this one is decreasing we are still just approaching the x-axis. And you could see those numbers in the table getting smaller, closer to zero, but they're never going to touch zero. So our asymptote is y equals zero. The domain, we're gonna go left forever and right forever, so the domain is all real numbers. The range would be everything greater than zero because we're never going to touch zero, but that graph is going to go in the up direction forever. So y is greater than zero. And then our y intercept was three, which we can see in the graph and in the equation. And this was exponential decay. Okay, now we're going to look at some graphs that are already graphed for us. So on number three, they're wanting us to identify the asymptote first which is just where that graph is approaching, which it looks like it's approaching this horizontal line right here, which would be y equals two. The domain is gonna be all real numbers since the graph is gonna go towards the left and towards the right forever. And then the range is going to be y is greater than two since it's going up forever, but it has that boundary of two that it'll never cross. Looks like our y-intercept is right there at positive 1, 2, 3. And then this shows exponential growth since it's increasing from left to right. Okay, let's look at number 4. So first thing is the asymptote, which it looks like it is approaching this horizontal line right here, which is y equals 1. The domain is all real numbers because it goes in the left direction and the right direction forever. And then this time our range is gonna be y is less than, since it's going down forever, and it's gonna be y is less than one, since it's approaching one, just never crossing it. Our y-intercept is right here at the origin, so zero. And then this would be decay, since it is decreasing. All right, last one, let's start with the asymptote. We are approaching this horizontal line right here, which is y equals negative one. The domain would be all real numbers since it's going towards the left and right forever. Our range is y is greater than negative one since it's everything above negative one. The y-intercept is right here at 2, and then this shows exponential decay since it is decreasing from left to right.